This is Rob Tebbett for Boxing Social. Delighted to be joined here today, as always, by the Tartan Tornado, Josh Taylor. We're here at McGuigan's gym. How are you, Josh? I'm all good, yeah. Um, End of another week, hard training, so yeah, another week closer to the fight, can't wait. Three weeks tomorrow, you fight Ryan Martin in the World Boxing Super Series quarter final. How's camp been so far? Camp's been going brilliant. You know, this is the best I've felt uh, in camp for a long time, you know, um, especially after the last camp, I was just trying to be to everything too over analyst was it was it analytical analytical that's the one couldn't say that analytical over everything you know it was just over analyzing everything um thinking too hard and trying too hard and all that sort of stuff but I'm, I'm feeling a lot better this camp i'm performing a lot better um i'm lifting heavier weights i'm doing I'm beating on my best and, and pbs and everything you know so I'm, I'm really really feeling great i can't wait to get going in three weeks time Tell me a little bit about that because I've known you for a while now and one of the things that we always often find ourselves talking about, we were just talking about it off camera, is kind of your, your, like, your perfectionism and, and your, your willingness to do well and you get yeah. quite frustrated at times. Has the Pastol fight, the fact that it was the biggest fight of your career, has that, has that mellowed that? Is there, are there still trace elements of that that are still part of yeah, your makeup? I think, yeah, I think I've definitely learned from that and uh, I've come, I've learned from not be every day, you don't have to be 100% every day, but as long as you're given 100%, you know, if you have a bad day, you have a bad day, uh, or if you're not feeling as good, you're not going to feel 100% every single day, you're going to feel days when you're tired or you're a bit sore from training and things like that, so there are going to be days where you're, you're not as, you know, switched on and ready to go, you know, you're going to have days where you're feeling a bit flat and this and that, so yeah, I've, I've learned, I've learned a lot, you know, so I'm just going, just going with the flow a little bit more and just uh, I'm enjoying the training and I've, I'm not putting pressure on myself so I'm feeling I'm feeling a lot better for it. Um, also, I've just got myself a flat down here as well so I'm more settled as well. You know, I've got a, a base now where I am in between sessions to can go back home, chill out, eat good food, you know, and go for a rest and things like that. So I'm, I'm performing a, a hundred times better and I'm in a much better place as can't be. Yeah. You're somebody who, I mean, you travelled around a lot when you were an amateur, when you were boxing in the GB, you were away from home a lot. Is this sort of the first time in your career that you've had that, that kind of settledness with your training and not having to go back and forth to Scotland all the time? Um, no, it's just uh, the last camp I was staying in hotels um, every week. So I was packing my bag every week and going to a hotel and, and having to stay in different rooms and this and that. So I was just never able to get settled, you know, um, whereas this time, I've brought all my stuff down, I've put it in my flat, I've put everything, what I need is in the flat, I don't need anything, you know, I've got my telly there, my Xbox if I want it, you know, um, my, my Netflix and all that sort of stuff, just to watch TV and chill out, watch DVDs, you know, and things like that if I, if I want to just chill out. So I'm, I'm much more settled in and, and I'm happy and I'm in a much more relaxed state of mind, so I'm, uh, I'm just able to enjoy my training and just focus on my training, what I need to be doing, and I'm performing a lot better in the gym for it, so I am. I'm happy where I am at, yeah. We've also got a new addition to the gym. Table tennis table. <laughs> How's that been going? I saw you busting your moves earlier. Oh, shame for me, <laughs> shame for me. I think I've played about 40 games and not won one. You know, the only thing I've won, I've won a few rallies here and there, but I've never won a game yet. So I'm absolutely terrible. Same with FIFA as well. We've got FIFA up the stairs in the, in the change room. And uh, I don't think I've ever won a game there either, so the only thing I'm, I'm still really crap at it, but the only thing I'm beating for is it is yeah, the darts. So uh, if anybody wants a darts challenge, I'll be up for that, but anything else, I'm by the window. It seems to me, I mean, we've, we've just alluded to this at the start of the interview about your kind of, your perfectionist style, you're very competitive, and everybody yeah. in the gym is very competitive, despite being at different stages of yeah. their career. Does that kind of spill over into the table tennis? Do oh, we see, do we see I, paddles I, flying across the room? I have just about threw a couple of paddles across the room. <laughs> I, uh, especially when I'm doing all right, I'm doing not too bad and getting a wee streak or getting the sniffy win in the game and then I lose it in the last minute and the last couple of points. So I feel like chucking the paddles all over the place, but no, it's a good laugh, it's a good, a good wee bit of... Uh, Cracking between sessions and stuff, you know, we get a wee, a wee bit of banner going on, so we get wee tournaments going and all that. So it's good, it's really good. Where does that, that, I mean, obviously I understand that being a fighter, everybody has to have that kind of competitive, competitive spirit. But where, you're somebody who strikes me as it's more for you. It's a level up. Even when speaking to some of your stable mates, I mean, you're very much, you're intense in that regard. As a person, you're, you're relatively chilled out, except when you're cycling. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we'll come on to that shortly. Um, where do you think that kind of that additional element comes from with you, and how do you think it helps you, or how do you think it holds you back in some parts of your, your career? Well, the, um, the competitiveness. Mm. Um, I just, I'm just very competitive in everything that I do. Um, everything that I do, I want to win. You know, so I hate, I hate losing. I want to win everything. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, and I think that's partly why I'm a successful fighter because I'm competitive in everything that I do. I'm competitive in training. And I want to lift more weights than I have before. You know, I want to, I want to run further on the on the sprints. I want to do quicker times than I have before and things like that. So I'm very competitive. If somebody's doing something a wee bit quicker than me in the sprints, I want to, I want to try and beat them the next time around, do you know what I mean? So it, it pushes me and it pushes me at that level, to that next level. And I think that's why I'm a, a good fighter, you know, because I'm very competitive and I've got a will to win that, that you can't teach. So um, I think that's a good thing, yeah, I think it's a good thing. You're heading into the World Boxing Super Series and kind of like the most attractive thing about the World Boxing Super Series is the kind of best fight and the best sort of mantra really. You're somebody who's been challenged from a very from a very early stage of your professional career. You won the yeah. Commonwealth title after seven fights. You, you just boxed Victor for Stoll. Do you think that's going to stand you in good stead? And you kind of like relieved now, looking back at, at having those hard fights and those tests so early in your career when you're heading into a tournament like the World Boxing Super Series. Yeah, I think it's been uh, very beneficial. Um, I've boxed some great calibers opponents in only 13 fights. You know, uh, I think I've boxed better oppositions than most of the guys in this competition of box before, you know, so it's put me in great stead and also my, my amateur background and seeing all these different styles and all, moving to all the different countries over the world and seeing all these different ways of fighting, so yeah, I think I've got a wee bit of an advantage that way and, and that way, yeah, definitely. Tell me about your sparring today. It's the first time I've watched you spar with Chris Congo, who's somebody I know, I've known for a long time, but I've yeah. never actually seen you two together. I know you've sparred regularly. Just tell me a little bit about how it's beneficial to have him. He's got quite a similar style to Ryan Martin, he's just a bit yeah. bigger. What sort of stuff are you working on? What sort of stuff are you looking for from Chris as you prepare for Ryan Martin? Well, I'm not going to tell you what I'm working on, so <laughs> in case Ryan Martin knows in this. So, no, I'm not telling you what I'm working on, but uh, Chris Congo is a very good sparring partner. He's good work. I think we've used him for the last three fights now. Um, used him for Postal, and he'd done, he done, done similar things with Postal was doing, you know, and he's, he's, he's very good, he's, done, he's doing similar things as what uh, Ryan Martin does as well, you know, so he's, he's very good work, you know, and he can, he can adapt and change his style as well, you know, he can switch it up, so he's very good work and um, he's getting me in top shape, so I can't thank him enough, I've been getting really good sparring this camp, to be honest, um, not just from him, you know, from other fighters as well, I've got my, my mate down from Scotland, John Thane, the last couple of weeks yeah. as well, you know, I've got a, a couple of lads that I've been sparring with as well. Sam McNess too for, for in close work and you know, blocking and catching and, and firing back and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I've had really good sparring and uh, it's going well and I'm, I'm feeling great, yeah. How pleasing is it for you that this fight with Ryan Martin has ended up back in Glasgow? I was yeah. there when you boxed Victor Pistol. I heard the reception you got, mm. uh, the Flower of Scotland. It's, it's really, it's a unique place to watch mm. boxing, I think. It must make you feel good going back there with such a big fight. Oh, it's it's brilliant. I mean, um, I don't think, I don't think when every fighter comes to Scotland and it's a big fight with Ricky Burns fights and all that sort of stuff, the atmosphere that the fans make, and I don't think the fighters that are coming and visiting have, have experienced like an atmosphere like that. You know what I mean? It's just the, the atmosphere they make, the noise they make. Um, it's just brilliant. You know, it's the, and the most passionate fans in the world. You know, they get behind you and they're, they're throwing every single punch with you, so it definitely lifts you that. Um, extra five, ten percent, you know, and, and there's no way, there's nobody, there's nobody beating me in front of the fans, man. They're, they're, they're amazing. They're amazing. Do you think that that's just one of many elements that are going to prove the difference between you and Ryan Martin? I mean, some people don't really know a lot about Ryan Martin. I think it's fair to say that sort of the, the inner circle of boxing or the boxing hardcore know him mm -hmm. from his from his early days as a lightweight. Yeah. Do you think that going into an environment like that is going to shock him and will give you the edge? Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's going to be ready for um, what's coming, the kind of atmosphere he's boxed. I don't think he's ever boxed in a, a, full, a, stadium, a full stadium before or a full arena before, so he's going to get a wee bit of a shock, but I'm not going to be thinking about that um, because it's not going to help me in the fight, to be honest, but it might give him a wee bit of a, a, wee bit of a shock at what the, the kind of 
first time I was here was going to be um, up in Glasgow. I mean, they've, all, they've, all really they've all really given it. They've all really given it, yeah. Your stable mate is just behind you, Lee McGregor. Um, somebody I always speak to about you. I mean, kind of in the same way as you've had the likes of George Groves, David Hay, Cole Frampton over the years. Lee McGregor has you as kind of you're in the amateur cycle before him, both Scotsman, both sharing bills. He challenges for the Commonwealth title tomorrow night. How pleasing is it for you to see him taking the similar sort of risk that you did? I mean, he actually has done it a little bit earlier than you. Yeah. Um, in his career, what's that like for you to see somebody like Lee McGregor taking those risks? It's, it's really good, you know. I feel I feel really happy for him. I'm really proud for him. Uh, proud of him, you know. He's he's a great wee fighter, you know. He is a he is a great wee fighter, you know. And uh, I'm not one for blowing smoke up anybody's anybody's backside, but he is a really good wee fighter. He, he trains he trains really hard, you know. And he's very he's very well and mentally. He's in a great place, you know, for for such a young lad and no really much experience. Um, He's been watching and learning myself, or for myself, obviously, and, and George and Luke. You know, Luke's obviously very, very well experienced as well. So he's been learning off us in the gym. And for this being his first big title fight, he's, he's really mentally impressed me. So I feel he's going to put in a, a big performance tomorrow night, and uh, he's really looking forward to getting going. He's a great big fighter, so I'll be in there and, and supporting him tomorrow, and I can't wait to see him lift his belt. What's your relationship like with him? Do you feel like a sense of, you know, a sense of pride or protection? I think is kind of the word that I'm looking for. I've, I've mentioned it in the past. There's this kind of like, it's very cheesy. There's like a circle of life sort of thing at McGuigan's. I always feel like there's like the, the young prospects, then there's you who's sort of like borderline or on the verge of world titles. And then in the past, you've had your Frampton, your Groves, your Hayes. Do you feel kind of like, it's kind of like, a, I mean, it's, it's thrown around a lot in boxing, that kind of like big brother mentality with Lee. I mean, Lee's like a young whippersnapper. You're not that young anymore. But is, 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 is that than you? Yeah, I know you are younger than me. Yeah, um, yeah. Just tell me a little bit about your relationship with Lee. Just sort of away from boxing. I know you've known each other yeah. for quite a while now. Yeah, I've known Lee since uh, probably he was about probably it must have been about I don't know a right young kid, a right young kid. I mean, I was only for fifteen when I uh, joined Gumbler, and he was there. I knew his older brother. He was the boxer. His, old, his older brother was a boxer in the in the, in the boxing gym. And he was always running about the gym, running about mad, hitting bags and going sparring with other kids and stuff. So I always knew who he was. Um, and then he started boxing a few years ago. And then he started getting, started getting really good success. And then um, I started messaging him again, see how he was getting on. And he was going to go to the Commonwealth Games and I was giving him bits of advice. So I'm really proud that someone from my hometown, and like I know him, the same background and that sort of stuff, is, is coming up and doing the same things. So wee bits that I've learned along the line he, since I've turned professional we learned off of, like all the car and, and hay and groves and things like that and the wee bits of advice that I've learned off of them and tips that I've sought and things that I've learned from my own experience it's good to to have Lee to pass it mm. some of that like give some advice for myself onto him and try and guide him so I it's it's, it's good to to be able to sort of give a wee bits of advice in that when when I can and when, when he wants or when he looks for it so I it's it's good to to be able to sort of try and give you bits of advice and keep them calm and, you know, because I know what I'm like before my fights I was very very uptight before my title fight I was like very sort of oh this is going to be 12 rounds and panicking about that sort of thing kind of thing whereas I now know that I can do it and I've done, been through it and done it so I'm passing that wee bits of experience for myself to keep relaxed and, and he is and he's, he's, uh, he's really impressed me with how, how mentally he's, he's dealt with it so I am um, it's been good to developing our relationship's kind of like probably about a year or so that we've been doing kind of regular work together me and yeah. you um do you feel like you're maturing now i mean it's, it's a quite a, it's quite a weird question for me to ask you because i see you away from the camera running around the gym like a madman <laughs> but do you feel like with your i mean your ahara davis fight your yeah. miguel vasquez fight your victor Pistol fight do you feel like you are maturing now you're you're, you're developing into a different person Aye, and, and the boxing side things. I think I'll always, I'll always be 16 in the head, you know, I've gone a bit daft full of head full of nonsense. Uh, but no, in boxing, in boxing, I definitely am maturing a little bit as a fighter. Uh, just through experience and through everything that I've seen, and I'm just, uh, I'm just feel like I'm getting more well-rounded and becoming a more complete fighter. Uh, with every experience, every camp, every, every, you know, training session with Shane and things like that. So. 
I just feel I'm becoming more of a complete fighter every time, getting more mentally, mentally focused and more mentally stable and more mentally strong. I've always been strong-minded, but like I just feel I'm getting more well-rounded to everything. You know, just relaxed and using my experience now to my advantage. You know, I know I've got the skill, I know I've got the potential, I know I've got the the will to win, the competitiveness. It's now just keeping it calm and the calm before the storm sort of thing, you know, and uh, I'm getting better at doing that and I'm performing much better in the gym, I'm performing much better in sparring. So I am, I'm, I now feel I'm coming into my own, I'm coming into my prime and uh, I'll hopefully prove that in this tournament. Uh. Now I don't want to step on what's going to come out from, from Ryan Elliott, uh, Cyclone Promotions Media Chat. The last couple of days there's been, you've been doing like making like a kind of behind, I won't ruin it for people, but like a behind the scenes documentary of like teammates, campmates and stuff. Um, one thing that has come up is you being stranded on a desert island with people. Now you're of the opinion that you would be a great person. Be great. To be, <laughs> why is that? Why do you feel that? I'd be, I'd be the one wrestling crocodiles and that, <laughs> jumping in and, and hacking stuff up. <laughs> I'd be all that sort of stuff. I, I think that would be great. I wouldn't be so good at the, the building dens and that. That would need to be Joshy P. Uh, he's, uh, he's the one with the, the, handy, the handiness and the the handyman in the gym, so uh, I'm, more, I'm more just guns blazing, you know, if wrestle with crocodiles and shit, so I, that'd be good. <laughs> I'd be the hunter. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the, the phrase that's been put back, you'll be like the hunter-gatherer of the group, which is kind of interesting to, to think about, really. Um, moving away from being stranded on a desert island, um, stable mate George Groves uh, unfortunately lost his WBA super middleweight world title to Callum Smith a few weeks back in Jeddah. Just wondered if you caught the fight and, and your thoughts on it really. Yeah, I seen the, I seen the fight, yeah. Um, obviously George uh, had his had a defeat, so yeah, I've not I've not seen George since, you know, but I think um, I think he might have just got caught with a good shot, you know, and Callum Smith was just he looked so much bigger on the night and he was just the better man on the night, so yeah, uh, fair play. It was a good fight while it lasted, you know. So, and um, I think George will be back. You know, he'll take a wee bit of time out, and he'll, he'll definitely be back. He's he's a warrior. You know, he's proved that he can come back and, and win big fights again. So I'm sure he'll do it again. Yeah. What's it like watching one of your stable mates? I mean, obviously you weren't out in Jeddah. I'd imagine you be in a kind of jump around the living room type yeah. spectator. Yeah, Is that yeah. what happens? And what's it like when you see somebody who you train with a lot and you have a relationship yeah. with take a big loss in a big fight? No, I didn't, I didn't watch a fight live because I was at the, <coughs> the BBBFC uh, dinner. Um, but the, the, we had just heard the, the results, sorry, halfway through the night they announced it on the stage. And uh, I was really, I was shocked, to be honest. I was really shocked, you know, I couldn't believe it. Um, and half the room couldn't believe it either, you know. Um, I was really quite shocked and I felt I was really, really gutted for him and I was straight with the buttons to, to share and see who he was and all that sort of stuff. So, And then I watched it on the Sunday, you know, and it was a good fight while it lasted. Um, fair play to Callum Smith, he, he, boxed a, he boxed a great fight and, and caught George with a, a good left hook. Yeah. Now you mentioned the BBB of C dinner. You got yourself an award. Got myself Fighter an award, of the yeah. year. What was that like for you? Congratulations yeah, first and foremost. Much, yeah. um, tell me about that. I think it was good. Um, obviously, I was nominated for two awards, but I never won any awards, so I wasn't expecting any of them. And, uh, and I'm, I'm not in the sport for, to win awards, you know, uh, so I wasn't expecting to win any of them. But to win, actually come away and win the Box of the Year was, um, it was really a proud moment, to be honest, because past fighters that have won it, you just need to look at the list and how many good fighters are in there, even the list that was in it um, that year. The, just there a couple of weeks ago was the fighters that were in it were unbelievable as well. So I it was a really proud moment for me to to get it and it's nice to know that uh, my performances and my hard work and that haven't like people are taking notice, you know, that's not going unnoticed. People are taking notice of my hard work and my performances and uh, and acknowledging it. So yeah, it was uh, it was really nice and a um, very proud moment for me to be honest. I. Does that give you that kind of extra pep in your step when you're, I mean, I've spoken to you this week, your weight's coming down now, you're starting to, to really zero in on your fight with Ryan Martin. Does Do things like that just give you that little extra bit of impetus in your day to day? Yeah, it was a good wee confidence booster, you know. Um, good to know that my, my achievements and the year that I had, the, the fights that I had in the last year um, against good opponents, you know, Miguel Vasquez, Victor Posto, Ahar Davis, you know, and my, my my calibre opponents just kept going up every time and only had 13 fights. 
and uh, it was good to get a wee pat on the back, to be honest, you know, and, and get given that award and, and for people to notice and say, oh, well done, you've had a great year, so we yeah, it, uh, it was really nice to get the award and uh, I'd like to thank everybody that, that voted for me, to be honest, I, it, was, it was really good, and, so thanks. A hard day that somebody just mentioned um, took a loss against Jack Cattrall uh, last weekend in Leicester. What did you make of that? Did you watch the fight? Have you watched it back? I watched it, yeah. I thought um, it was a very poor fight, to be honest. I thought the two of them were very poor. Um, just standing off each other too much, giving each other too much respect. Um, just um, Although it was, it was a very poor fight to watch, so I kind of lost interest after about five, six rounds. Um, but I did think, in all honesty, in all honesty, I did think O'Hara was probably winning it, um, just nicking it um, with his jabs. And at one point, it looked like he could have maybe was going to catch Catterall with, with one of them counters. Um, but obviously, it wasn't to be. I never really watched the last four or five rounds. I lost interest. But um, I thought O'Hara was sort of just nicking it with his jab and catching with cleaner shots. Where do you think Ahara Davis will go from here? Not that I'm assuming you're not sitting around wondering about what Ahara Davis is going to do, but he was talking after the fight about potentially retiring from the sport. I mean, do you see that as a viable option? Do you see, do you see other fights for him in the future? Well, I, I don't know where he goes from here, you know, unless he gets a rematch with Caro and tries to, tries to do something like that. But, you know, it's, it's up to him. I'm not really fussed what he does. Um, Probably good if I never hear about him again. <laughs> uh, but um, nah, it's just uh, I don't know what he, what he does. You can't go straight back into title contention and say he's the best 140 lad. Like what he's been saying. Um, so I don't know where he goes. He probably goes back down to eight rounders and that and build himself back up. That's what he's going to have to do. That's what every fighter does. Um, he can't keep getting title fights because he's not a championship fighter anymore. So um, if he wants to go, he has to build his way back up again so it's up to him what and just finally tomorrow night sees Terence Crawford return to the ring somebody I know that you've watched in the past um, mm. former undisputed champion at your weight class super lightweight who's he boxing again? he's boxing Jose Benavidez Jr oh, wow. so, so you you look to me like you have some interest in that fight yeah that'll be I think, I've not seen much of Benavidez lately you know I've not, I don't think he's been, he's, he's been quite uh, an he, active yeah he got shot Ah, he got shot eye lately, he had not got shot, but he's not been fighting much not lately, really. has he? Um, but, having said that, I've seen him in the past, I've seen him in, I went over to the wild card a couple of times, I went over in 2009, and again after the Olympics in 2012, and he, he was really holding more on his own against Amir Khan over there, in sparring sessions and stuff like that, and Manny Pacquiao, and that, and he was really doing really well, he was a hell of a fighter, and he had a, a big reputation over there, so I think that's going to be, a good fight, I think that's going to be a competitive fight, uh, just a pit, I'm not going to be able to sit up and watch it, but I'll watch it on the Sunday maybe, but um, I think that's going to be a real good fight, um, a tougher fight than for Terence Crawford than everybody thinks, um, so I think it'll be a good one to watch that. Is £147 something that's on your mind? I know we've spoken about it in the past, um, and I've spoken to Shane about it, and he says that you're, you're doing the weight well and you're, sort of, you're yeah. getting bigger on, on fight night, you're now yeah. filling into your, your, kind of your man size and your yeah. man strength. How long do you see yourself at 140? Obviously, I'm assuming until the end of the World Boxing Super Series, yeah. but after that, is it a case of moving up to welterweight? Well, I've not really thought about it, to be honest. I'm making the weight really quite comfortably. Um, you know, I'm big for the weight, I'm tall for the weight. Everybody says, how do you make it? But I actually really do make it really quite comfortably. So I've no, no any thoughts of moving up at all um, at the minute. But realistically, it might only be another two or three years because um, I am filling out a little bit more. But I'm making the weight perfect at the minute, so um, I'm not thinking about moving up. But in terms of if I if I win this World uh, Series boxing, and then go on and unify the division, then then the next goal would be to move up and try and win a title at, at welterweight. Um, so that would be the next goal, the long longer term goals, uh, move up to to uh, welterweight and, and win a world title there. I've definitely got the size for it, the frame for it. I'm getting stronger and bigger all the time, so I definitely can do it. Um, but at the minute, no, I'm not, I'm not having any thoughts. Uh, Get those welterweight paydays. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> right, that's well, uh, there's, that, there's that one as well. Right? Okay, well, I'm going to let you go now because you've got your lovely girlfriend here yeah. waiting to, to, to whisk you away. Um, so I'll say goodbye. I'll see you again soon. 
careful on your bike. Okay, Any no drop, road rage, no road rage, no road rage on the bicycle. <laughs> um, Josh Taylor, always a pleasure to sit down with you. Thanks very much for having me down to the gym, and I will see you tomorrow night at York Hall. Oh, yeah, see you tomorrow. Cheers, mate. Cheers.